Hey guys, so in this video we're going to add timer so our resources can actually respawn and then we'll just make some small visual improvements. For the timer we need to create a new component. So if you go to your blueprints, components, right click, create blueprint class and this will be actor component. We can name this actor spawner underscore bpc. Open it up. And in here, we don't actually need to do anything on begin play. We just need to add custom event. And this will be start respawn cooldown. We will need some input, which will be respawn duration. This will be type float. And we'll promote it to variable here. With the same name. Now we can add this component to our resource and instead of destroying the resource after we mine it or chop it or anything else then we want to hide it because that way we can keep it in the memory and it doesn't need to load all the time when we're spawning it. Instead we'll just hide it, turn off the tick and we will turn off the collision as well. So for that we need to get owner We will set actor hidden in game. This needs to be true, so we will hide it. We will set actor tick enabled. That needs to be disabled, so the tick doesn't run. And set actor enable collision. And this we need to turn off as well, so it doesn't have any collision. Then we will start timer by event uh, set timer by event by event this respawn duration will be the time which is in seconds we don't want it to be looping and from the event we want to add custom event and this will be spawn timer Actually, we can call it respawn item or actor, respawn actor. And now after this timer runs out, it will just do this once because we're not looping it. And we just want to set all of these to opposite values. So copy it and we will unhide it. We will enable tick and we will enable collision. Compile and save. And this is very simple setup. You can just go to resource now and add actor respawner, actor spawner. And then here when we're destroying the actor. So this is in end of this set progress when we are on 100%. So we're not going to destroy it. We're just going to call this actor spawner and we're going to start respawn cooldown and respawn duration we can create a variable we can promote this and we will also make it instance editable so we can edit it on each resource and that is pretty much it now if i go to my game and on this iron, I will set it to 5, which is 5 seconds. And you can see I can collide with it. But if I mine it, it will disappear. I can walk around here now. And after 5 seconds, it will appear again. And now I can mine it once again. There we go. And that's it for the respawning resources. So now you can set it to something like 10 minutes, which would be like 600 in seconds. And you can set it to all of the nodes. Uh, also, if you wanted to respawn it after you change level or something, when you have your function for changing the level, which I don't have created now, but I might do some at some point later in the tutorial, you would just, after that function, you would call 
all of the all of the resources you have just do a for loop and then just call maybe start respawn cooldown or just create new one that will actually respawn it straight away or just call this one respawn actor and next thing i want to do is i want to change the interact type because we haven't done it so at the moment it just says pick up none so in the interact enumerator interact type we will add three new ones and first one will be mine then cut like cut wood or tree and gather save it go to resource compile this and on begin play we do have this setup already so on mining it will be mine logging will be cut gathering will be gather so now this one actually doesn't show me anything because we need to also set it in the interact prompt so interact prompt and this is getting a little bit long so i'm just going to do second column here this will be mine mine And this one will be cut and gather. Now that's fixed. We can also add uh, effect. So every time we play sound, we can also play effect. And for that, you can go to Fab. And if you search for Realistic Starter VFX Pack Volume 2, you can get it for free. So download it, add it to your project, and then in there we do have these particles and we do have destruction. And for metal, we can use this destruction metal, which gives you sparks. So it's perfect for us. And for wood, you got actually wooden chips flying around. So for destruction metal, I want to change the color slightly but I don't want to change the color of the default one so I'm going to duplicate it and this will be mining effect in our third person I'm going to create new folder this will be effects and then I'm just going to move it from there and now inside the effects folder open it up and for color of a life you can open this and distribution and here you got the constant that will change the color so i want to have it maybe between orange and red so it's not as white as before and then to actually spawn it we need to open our pickaxe so let's go to it's in the meshes we don't have an item so meshes pickaxe open it up and instead of spawning it at the location of the resource we're going to make it look nicer we're going to spawn it on the tip of this pickaxe for that here next to details you got socket manager so add socket and this will be to uh, impact something like that then copy this name save it and then in the player after we play sound so on the same notify we're going to spawn emitter at location here because it's only done for mining you can actually connect the multiple ones and then change it on select but for now i'll just change this manually to mining effect a location we will we do have this tool here need to move this back 
So get the tool as a reference. And now the problem is this is not the actual mining pick. This is just the generic actor tool. So we can't get its mesh. But what we can do is we can cast to mining. Cast to mining pick. Is that what it's called? Pickaxe, sorry, cast, cast to pickaxe. Blueprint that we have created. And then as pickaxe, we can get mesh. Get item mesh. Then get socket location. Socket will be, I'll paste it. I have already copied something else. So it will be tool impact. That is the socket that we created. That will be in the mesh and then return value will go to this location. I have, haven't actually set the socket, so in the pickaxe, move the socket to, not sure which side is the one we're hitting with. So I'll just move it here to the tip. Save it. And we don't have to change anything else here. And now if I go to game. And start mining. I do have a nice sparks flying except for it's flying from the other side. So on the pickaxe itself, change the socket to the one here. And what I want to do is also I want to speed up my mining montage. So here play rate will be maybe 1.3. So it moves a little bit faster. Ah, that's much better. So you can see we do have a nice effect now. And looted iron bar. Perfect. And then just quickly I want to show you how we can play only part of the animation. Because for example, I found the animation on Mixamo, which is this gathering. And as you can see, it has like crouch animation and then it starts gathering. And we obviously don't want to loop the whole thing because it also stands up, it crouches down and it will be looping all over. So instead what I want to do is play only this part where it's picking up the herbs or whatever. And I will still keep this one in the beginning. So for that, let's right click. You don't have to obviously do this part because I'm not including this asset. You can get it from Xamo. But if you have the same issue that you have some animation that actually you walk towards the tree or prepare the axe or anything like that, then the way you would do it is create mesh first, uh, montage. So create montage, open it up. And then on the montage, I can right click here, new montage section. This will be pick. And it will actually end when it stops picking somewhere here. And this will be stand up. I'm not going to use that one, but this will just uh, create the montage sections between that. Between that. And now what you can do is go to montage section. After default, after pick, I will remove link, and then pick, I will be picking. So it will go to default. It will play default, and then it will loop at the pick. So if you play the animation now, it will go down and now it will loop. And obviously it's not perfect because the position between this starting point and ending point is a little bit different. But what you could also do is get this starting frame and ending frame and then edit the animation in sequencer and just move the curves so they start and end at the same point. And then for my gathering, I could just play this animation, which is, is it this one here, mining, logging, gathering. I'll change this one to gathering. 
and then I will actually nicely go down instead of just snapping to it to that position and blending. All right? That's how you can play just a part of the animation over and over. And that is it for this video. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.